Wow. Okay, let's start. Uh, my name is Bartek Kuczyński. Uh, in net, no as Koziołek. This is my Twitter, yes. And today we will talk about the monoliths, microservices, architecture at all, and who cares about that, yeah? Uh, question is, is it work? No. Uh, now it works? Yeah. Uh, if you have any question, this is a, a Slido stuff. I think that other people who make the talks before me tell you how does it work. And don't ask me how does it work because I don't know. Yeah? Uh, the idea of this talk uh, appear around uh, one year ago when I work with the JLupin and I discovered that the, there is uh, just two things uh, that are the root of our architecture in our project, yes? The first is the name, yes? The name cells. The second was that how we deploy this stuff uh, to mm, our servers, to, 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 the pro to the test, to the production, yes? And it was so bad in some case because we are strongly depends on mm, our deployment pi pipeline, yes? Some uh, stuff are impossible to do because deployment, yes? And I say, okay, it's not a good way. And in one moment, uh, we decide to change everything, redo, and then we discover that we could create the application in microservice architecture, in monolith architecture for the uh, local tests, yes? And if the code is well designed, then we don't care about the names, about the architecture, and about everything. But the, there is only one way to achieve that, yes? The architecture of the code must follow some simple rules, and then it, everything will be okay. The first question, what is the architecture? Who knows? Probably lot of hands here. I cannot see that this is, uh, this is the you are in the, the very dark place and I'm in the, I'm the light, <laughs> yes? Okay, the answer is which one? Architecture, yes? Uh, maybe it's an uh, enterprise architecture, structure of the corporation, yes? Not only IT, but processes, uh, mm, hierarchy. Uh, all those stuff that we have all around, because in not in all corporation IT is the main, uh, the core team. In many places, the IT is a main problem, yes? So <coughs> this is one type of the architecture. Maybe, uh, okay, let's, let's go to the somewhere uh, nearby uh, computers. Yes, infrastructure ar architecture, the hardware, the networking. This is a place where you ask, the true architects, the guys who uh, design buildings, yes, to build your server room. Yeah. Who, who, who know how to build the server room in this, in this room? <laughs> okay, it, it's, it's a quite big uh, piece of the knowledge in IT, yes? Uh, okay, system architecture, the automation of the processes, why we auto automate, why we stay with manual processes in some cases, yes? And application architecture, proteinology, in Polish it's, a, it's be quite better way, but how we, decide, uh, how we work with the end users, yes? With our protein-based interfaces. And uh, when we talk about the architecture in IT, in our a uh, small group in ho of the from the mm, whole set of the uh, IT stuff. We talk about uh, those 
to system and application architecture, yes, in most, most cases. Of course, there is some special, uh, special, sp uh, special architectures, yes, uh, I don't know, the security, yes, this is an example, the specializ uh, spe specialization that architecture, <laughs> bad word, okay. Uh, so if we uh, decide which architecture we would like to describe, then let's ask another question. When we pick the architecture? Okay. Any idea? Okay, let's start at the beginning, yes? The completely greenfield project. We have nothing, and our product will be everything that we could imagine. Yes, we could draw everything and uh, UML accept everything. This is very elastic way. Yes, the problem in this case is that we know nothing about the product. Yes. Client came to us, especially if not s if uh, client is not technical, and describe us the business, yes, the some kind of the idea of the business, and say, let's write the code for that, okay, and you start out ask the questions. They say, okay, it looks like this. I would like to achieve s something like this. Okay, you try to take his Im images and write it down to the some kind of document, but still you know nothing, yes? And uh, uh, effect of this word could be completely bad, yes? Okay, uh, so maybe at the end, yes? Why not? Who, who write the architecture documents at the end of the project? Yeah, <laughs> uh, I know that. This is not good in most cases, but I know few cases when it's quite good idea to decide which one architecture uh, we pick at the end of the project. If we create something very small, yes, uh, the manager came to us and say, okay, we have a s that small app to do. You have a two weeks to go to production. Yes, two weeks. S there is a more or less, you know what you would like to do more your client came to you and give you everything, uh, all the information that you need. So you sit together and write the code, yes? And after five, six, seven days, you say, okay, it works, looks nice, let's uh, create the documentation for that, yes? Uh, this idea uh, is valid for the very short living pro uh, products, yes? Uh, especially it's something uh, that we make uh, when we are on the, uh, on the university, on the uh, polytechnics. Uh, we write the code and then add description to our professors, yes? This is this, is this case. The bad, very bad idea uh, to provide the architecture at the end if you make a long-term project. After three years, probably no one who begin the project is in the project, yes? There will be a lot of dark places and you finish with the big mud, uh, mud uh, big ball of the legacy code, yes? Okay, maybe uh, in the middle, yes? It, this is a common case, yes? We start the mm, project, we start to code, uh, re make two, three features and we start to understand how does the product works, yes, what the cli uh, client really w uh, wants to, uh, from us. And the middle, whatever it means, uh, it's, a, it's a moment when uh, some product owner or manager came to you and say, okay, guys, it works, we have some features, but we need some formal job, yes, some documents that describe what we 
did and what we would like to do. Yes, this is uh, this is something that happened in the most projects, I think. And uh, the bad part of this is that uh, you could try to make this decision in the in the future. Yes, in the future, in the future, are you mm, going to this the at the end point because no one. There is no one in the, uh, nobody in team who would like to take the rep responsibility for that architecture, yes, because uh, someone must sit and write the, those documents and they are responsible for that, yes. And there is a f uh, one more option. Who knows what? What is it? Never, yes, never pick the architecture. Two cases. First case, uh, something that is fire and forget. Uh, speci uh, especially you write the uh, SQL and PL SQL uh, programs to fix the data. You don't think about the architecture, you never pick the architecture, or you, or you write the small command line tool that fix the some CVS file from our client, yes? One time job. You do that, run at, run this code and forget about that, yes? And the second place is that someone else pick an architecture for you, yes? This is, is quite common if you work in the big companies that you must work with some architecture that someone else designed for you, yes? Some architects, corporate architects, senior corporate architects, yes? <coughs> ask uh, Jarek Ratajski how, how he named it. Um, in this case, you have two options, yes? Three options. Ta the first, obvious, everything is okay for you, yes? You take the project, try to play with that. And the two other is change organization or change or organization, yes? Try to force your idea of the architecture. Of course, you need some power to do that. Another is to leave the project, yes? So thi this is a, uh, I think the very popular case when we create new project, but the architecture is something that someone else completely out of the project, out of the team, create for us. Yes, mm. and sometimes it's good, sometimes it's very bad. But the truth is that even if you pick the architecture, after some time, yes, you need to change that. Why? Because architecture is alive, yes? It's a living creature that changed the form during the project life, yes? You change the idea, you change the how the project works, you uh, must change to <coughs> achieve some goals or be compliant with, I don't know, changes in the law. GDPR, it's a brilliant example. You Maybe some of you need to change your architecture because there is a GP GDPR RODO uh, law and your architecture doesn't match for that, yes? Okay, but uh, another question. What is our motivation? Yes, I translated the slides 30 minutes ago. Uh, what is your motivation when you pick the architecture? Hmm? Is architecture uh, a technology? The question for you. Is, is architecture the technology? Answer is no. Architecture is not technology, but <coughs> it depends. It's a little bit complicated. First, architecture depends on technology, yes? From the bottom, it's uh, by the motivation. Who would like to work with the Java 2 EE, old Java Enterprise 
nowadays, yes, your manager uh, came to you and said, okay, from today, you have new project, but uh, it will be AJB 2.1. Uh, Brilliant, yes? Nobody wants that, yes? Even if you need the money, and you can, uh, can uh, send the very, very big invoice for that, nobody wants to do that, yes? Everyone would like to work with something new, yes? Because in IT, we are like uh, kids. We like to play and to recognize new stuff, yes? But if someone comes to you and say, from today you will work with the, uh, our brilliant blockchain architecture uh, ba based blah, blah, blah project, yes? Mm. A lot of people would like to go to this type of the project. If you go to the, our spo sponsors and ask them, have you got a new project, Greenfields, something, new technologies? They say, okay, we, we have something, yes? Maintenance? No. But this is, uh, this is uh, much more uh, mental <laughs> limitation. The hard limit from the top is, uh, uh, is limited uh, uh, by the technology that you have uh, available at the moment. Yes? I miss the word. Brilliant. Uh, how it's limited? Who knows? What is the limitation of uh, architecture nowadays? The network, yes? The I.O. You cannot be faster than light. So you have a problem with creating the quite big distributed systems. You need to make a tricks to give your clients possibility to connect to your product in the same more or less lag all around the world, yes? You need to make a tricks, yes? This is the same uh, uh, like our always, like in common building architecture, yes? So, mm, thousand years ago, people don't know how to uh, build the steel con constructions, yes? They, the steel was quite expensive, so they built from the bricks uh, and build brilliant buildings, yes? Nowadays we know how to build to using concrete and the steel and we build something like like this, yes? The, 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 the big box, boxes, yeah? Not good, something went, went wrong. Okay, architecture is a uh, marketing tool. Is it true? Yeah, it's true. Take a look. In 1991, Intel Insight appears, more or less, and the idea of that was client should take care about the logo, about the architecture that is in his computer. Yes? Uh, so let's learn the client to look for the logo, yes? For the Intel logo. The, 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 the reason of that was mm, much more complex. Intel lo uh, losing the war with AMD about the architecture of the CPUs in the, in the personal computers. There was, uh, th that was a time when, when we have a lot of brilliant architectures uh, from Motorola and from uh, Amiga, yes? But Intel say, okay, let's learn user to search the logo, our logo, on the computer. Yes, and nowadays, when we would like to sell the product or sell the our company as a product because we would like to uh, find some new uh, employees, we give them the buzzwords. Yes, technically, uh, microservices or blockchain. Yes, this is the quite nice example of some mm, microservices, especially it's something that is uh <coughs> the buzzword, yes, because the idea is uh, much more older, yes. By the way, this site, a software system can uh, best be designed if you testing is blah, 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 blah. You know that? 
it sounds like uh, TDD, yes? Good system is a test system that could be test. Yes, easy to t it could be easy to test, will be easy to test. A good system are that are presently working uh, were written by the small groups. More than 20 programmers working on a project is is something horrible. Who has a team over 10 per person? Nobody. Yes. <laughs> oh, what you w w what you do? With, with you play football or something? <laughs> Ten per people. Yeah, you, you could play football or basketball. <laughs> it's quite good. Yes. The idea is, of course, uh, ba based on the interactions between these people. More people, more interaction. In some c some moment, we are uh, only in only in interact, only communicate, uh, and not working, or we work lost some parts of the information because we lost the communication. Yes? It's the it producted a usable product. And the pe uh, period between the end of the stage and the start to of the next provide the operational experience upon which the next design was, bas was based. Yes? Sounds like agile. Yes? But small teams that work in the short, well-defined uh, well cycles, and they give the product, yeah? It's Nihil Novi, yes? It's, it's quite old idea from 1968, yes? From this document. But a few years ago, uh, there is a big woe on the conferences, when the people talk about how we implement the Scrum, how we implement the Agile in our company, and how it make our work better. Yes, it's the same with the architecture, yes? It's a fashion for architecture. SOA, who, who remembers SOA? Yeah, that was brilliant. Uh, microservices, yeah? The same, service-based architecture, but with some extra elements that are possible because we have a uh, new technology, yes? I don't know, blockchain, yeah? All the same day, yes? <laughs> you know from uh, which song came these words? Ball and chain, block and chain, all the same. Okay, <coughs> let's make a small switch and let's let's go to the completely different concept yes and if we make the lego bricks what is brilliant in the lego bricks who knows yes you system exactly you built ev you could you could build almost everything yes because the durability of the single piece of the lego is uh, high enough to build the building. Small house, yes, not a big building, but uh, small, but use, uh, useful, yes? So if you, somewhere in the, in the mountains and you see that uh, there will be a storm and you have a few Lego bricks on the side, you could build the home for you, yes? And su survive the storm. Uh, how we name the Lego in IT? Who knows? Components, modular code. Yeah. Uh, the modular code is brilliant. If you don't use it, never use it, uh, don't know, uh, then uh, start to try. It's Try it, yes? Okay, uh, first, almost all popular languages support it. In Java, we have a module systems, we have a packages, in C, uh, C++, we have uh, some kind of the modules and uh, uh, runtime linking, yes? In Elixir Erlang, we have a modules, in Ruby, we have a gems, in uh, .NET, I don't know, probably Microsoft have something, yes? 
More tools support it, especially your ID. If you write uh, Java code uh, in Java 11 and use the uh, modular modules, yes, the Java modules, uh, then your IDE could say you cannot use this function, this method, because it came from uh, another module that uh <coughs> don't give you permission to use that. Yes, more even JavaScript use the modules. <laughs> okay. Uh, and the theory of modularity is quite easy to understand. Yes, we have a bricks, we join them together, we have a building. Yes, I practice and if you go deeper, it's of, of course it's much more complex because the, 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 the lot of problems appears, but even an uh, intern on the first day of the work understand that, yes? They played Lego a few days ago, so probably he know how does it work. Yes, everyone play Lego, yes? I expect that many um, of you still have your favorite bricks at home. Okay, how to achieve that? By the way, we have a question. Uh, can you tell more how Intel learn client? Uh, yes, they make advertisement. It was easy. If you remember that guys with that ba uh, banner clothes that uh, in, in the TV, uh, it was that. Yes, pam, param, pam, pam. Yes, wrong, wrong. <laughs> very bad time. By the way, uh, they failed that campaign uh, because they released the mm, CPU that uh, cannot into math. And uh, they spent a billion dollars the campaign that promote the CPU that uh, m make mistakes when they calculate stuff. Okay, how to achieve that? I call it physics laws of code, yes? Uh, first, we could tell that laws will be architecture independent, yes? Second, as a physics law, all the, the physics law, uh, they has a source in the observation. All the thing that you learn about the physics at the school, it's a laws that uh, came from the observation. Yes, Newton laws, uh, d dynamic laws, uh, all the Kirchhoff laws, all those came from the observation. Yes, the laws that don't came, uh, didn't came from the observation is uh, is a quantum mechanics. They came from the math. Okay. Uh, of course, this laws ha uh, has names, and we know. The rules, yes, TDD, BDD, Yagni, Drakis, uh, it's, uh, it's a design patterns, uh, domain driven design, yes, it's, it's a quite high, le a high level. Uh, <coughs> it's a something that I name object oriented BSDM. Nice words, but if you would like to play with that, you need to be brave enough. And they generate the costs. Let's take a look to this uh, two pieces of the code. Mm, looks th pretty the same, the same space on the screen. Uh, this on your right has something different. Yes, it looks a little bit different, but take a look to this one. This is a simple test. The client registration uh, via single sign-on. What? is the, where is the place that uh, tell us this is single sign-on? Who knows? Hmm? Name of the test, yes. And the second place, but the in, in the logic is there, there is a place that say, say, say that. It's obvious, if the uh, password data is null, <laughs> then client doesn't have a password because they register via single sign-on. No password, that means they came from external uh, resource, yeah? And let's compare this with this code. Yes, pretty the same. And now I, ha I wrote the assert that define the rules, yes? And the cost of this code is here, yes? 
This is equal tests. I just wrap the asserts from previous slide in the some well-named methods. And this cost is a time, yes, that I need to spend to write this assert, yes? Even if I write uh, well-known assert uh, J, even if I could generate the code for that, it's I need some time to do that, yes? And this is the cost. Uh, Pareto rule, you know, yes? 80% of your work is responsible uh, for the 20% of the effect, yes? That's true, but uh, the rest 20% of the work is responsible for the 80% of the effects. The problem is that before you finish, you cannot uh, say which part of your work is responsible uh, for the which part of the effect, yes? Sometimes you make something quite long time, effect is quite minimal, but <coughs> the influence for the whole system is quite big. Okay, uh, return on uh, investment is first economic uh, thing from to for today. Yes, if you have a problem to tell your uh, manager to, 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 to same, uh, you, you talk, talk uh, him that you need the time to write the test to, to follow the rules. Uh, change the uh, way that you talk. Tell them those stuff using his language. Managers understand the language of the economy, yes, of management, of the mm, <coughs> weight of the sum solutions, yes, of the effects. If you show them, okay, we spent some time at the beginning to write the extra code, but then our development will be faster, it, it's quite big cha chance that they understand that, yes? Uh, marginalism, yes? This is the example of the, uh, the example of this is code coverage. In some moment, more code coverage gives you nothing, yes? Uh, <coughs> no, if you add some extra resources to your project, the, the return of investments is quite small, yes? If you have a lot of uh, money, few extra uh, bucks, it's nothing for you, yes? If you have a 99% of code coverage, 1% extra, in most cases, means nothing, yes? But makes uh, marketing because you could say, okay, we are uh, green all around the code, yes? Okay. Mm. The costs, uh, longer start. Uh, start uh, as I said, and learn and teach, yes? You need to uh, learn yourself new f stuff every day, c continuously. You need to teach your team new stuff that you would like to use, yes? This is a problem. Some managers say, no, we don't have the time to learn. It's a mistake, yes? Uh, extra stuff, sometimes we need some extra architecture to, s extra hardware or software to do the <coughs> the stuff and the wrong cho uh, choice and wrong decision yes this is the cost but how to minimize that last part it will be uh, in the moment okay what is a good code first they follow the rules yes all those brilliant rules if we follow them then the change of the architecture from monolith to the microservices, it's not so hard because our code is so modular uh, and if you build a single jar or if you build the multiple Docker containers, doesn't care. Uh, if code break the rules, then uh, that means they break it in the smart way. Try to achieve don't repeat yourself rule in the microservice world. It's, it's tricky. And the smart way came from architecture. Sometimes architecture say, if we would like to build something, we need to break some rules, yes? Uh, 
if we break these rules, everything will be okay because we know what we do and why we do that, yes? And we write uh, quite a good uh, documentation for that for people who need to understand why we did something like this. Okay, how to check it? Next thing. Do not test architecture. It's impossible. So someone disagree with that? Why? No? <laughs> it's impossible because there is only one place where, uh, where you could, where you can test your architecture. It's a production with production data, with production payload. Yes? In every other case, you just, you just could estimate, is it okay or not? Of course, there is a system theory, system complexity, Q theory that give us the tools to test the parts of the architecture, yes? But uh, all those tools answer to the uh, very simple question. When our architecture fail, yes? What is the case, uh, what is the case when our application, I don't know, stop, yes? You finish with the uh, out of memory or, or something like that. <coughs> But the question from business about the architecture is, is that architecture good for us? The answer is, of course, it's good. Yes, because we don't know what is a production data. It, based on our experience, it solves your problem. Yes, Be, uh, because the number of the problems, uh, the set of the problems from business is, co uh, is uh, not so big and the set of the architecture, good architecture solutions is not so big too. So we just pick the nice architecture, say, okay, it will work for your project, yes? And the question that business should ask is, what happened if I mm, grow 10 times, yes? Is, is a, moment when, uh, wh where is the moment where your architecture fail? That's what you need to change in your architecture to pass so rapid grow, yeah? Okay, uh, what we could test, it's a code, the tools, check style and P uh, PMD, more uh, and PMD. More, uh, most of these tools are for Java because I, I was a Java guy when I created this presentation. Nowadays I'm not a Java guy. <laughs> okay, uh, Struct 101, this is very nice tool. Uh, you need to pay a lot for that, but uh, quite brilliant. Yes, take a, take a, take a look at the demo. I play with that a uh, few weeks and it's very, 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 very nice. Uh, what's about the uh, system architecture like uh, arc unit. Yeah, you have a f arc unit. Yes. <laughs> uh, the arc un the, the mm, what the arc unit give you gives you is that the answer to the question is your developers work uh, and in work follow the rules. Yes. Uh, if someone call arc, arc unit makes. Mm, similar uh, stuff to the uh, check style and uh, find bugs and P uh, PMD, uh, but in a quite better way, yes? because if you would like to write the rule in the check style that check if the classes from the package web controllers do, do not call uh, classes from the package uh, database access, it's tricky, yes, arc unit it's designed for these types of the checks, yes? To take a look to your code and answer the question, is there any place where we make some shortcuts? Yes, uh, when uh, someone try to design something against the rules that we should follow in our project, yes? And there is a one more question. And what about the deployment? Yes, because I, I start from the mm, 
point when, when I tell you we create the application that was a strongly depend on the deployment process, yes? And we would like to change something in our architecture and we fail because the deployment process stop us, stops us. Okay, mm, there is something else. This, there is a something called deployment architecture. Who, who of you use a continuous uh, integration delivery deployment stuff? One more. Okay, I, I see more more hands. Yes, and <coughs> what is the uh, important when you would like to introduce this type of the systems to your company? Is that uh, you need to remember that the deployment architecture and deployment system is independent from your system. Yes, deployment system. It's a completely different stuff. And our system is just the input data to the deployment. Yes, it's an input, ar uh, it's an uh, artifact for the deployment system. And of course, as every type of the data, they must be valid in this case. Yes, so you cannot write the code, in, I don't know, in Java 11 and uh, put your application in the containers and go to your uh, deployment uh, team and say, this is our containers, pl please deploy. And they say, no, we have a WebSphere uh, farm. Yes, sorry, we have a WebLogic cluster. Why not? Yes, you mu must, your, your architecture must be valid as a data to the deployment system, yes? This is only one thing that uh <coughs> it's only one place where they need to co uh, collaborate well. Yes. Uh, any questions? There is no brave people who would like to ask these questions here. Okay, I will uh, I will be outside if you to try to ask them even uh, when s through the slido mm. you could go ask me uh, out of the room thank you <laughs>